the, the, the longest we went without the fuel in Aitepe is almost two to three months. Yeah, and imagine, total blackout. There's no power at all. So, man, it was a big disruption to our normal routines here in school. It's, you know, costing the school arm and a leg to run uh, standby uh, generators. And now, with the, this uh, solar power, I saw the bills. It was a 70 to 80 percent reduction of what we normally pay. So, that's a big help you know, in terms of cost. Lo, long time, no got him solar energy yet, and we plan to finish him on work because no got him could play light, the old study. Some of the mangy also stop, you see, touch, look him, could walk, roll, or stop, on a big night thread. Then next day, long, or session, no class, and also feel I sleep, nice. So, my got him big privilege, lo, finish him, all extra work, roll, na. Test assignment, roll, to him, or say, more score a good roll marks because we block at him light stuff, and help more study. With the shortage of water, problems with electricity and all this, we used to go to Rayu River to wash. Then it takes about an half an hour to walk to the river and back. So this consumes time. Today it's water running and we used to do what we want to do, like water, toilet, everything. And for a small country like Papua New Guinea, uh, we are in the frontiers of experiencing these effects of uh, global warming. Our little islands and the, the soul lines, you know, the sea is eating in. I think with such projects like solar power, where we're trying to address this issue locally, domestically or globally, that's where the government should park money, should show more interest. We, we are the lucky ones we came to this school. At some other school, I don't know how they, how they do their studies. I feel sorry for them. So I think every school in Papua New Guinea should have a solar energy.